Hi folks, Wooden Boat Dan here. Just wanted to give you a heads up. The podcast you're about to listen to was recorded several years ago. So some of the phone numbers, email addresses, website, links, and time-sensitive information are no longer valid. Please keep that in mind as you listen. If you'd like to contact me, my email address is woodenboatdan at gmail.com. Thank you and enjoy the podcast. Thanks for listening to Hooked on Wooden Boats, weekly podcast episode number 113. My name is Dan Matson. I'm your host today. I'm also known as Wooden Boat Dan. And this is the world's first podcast, fully dedicated, 150%. Some weeks it's only 110, but usually it's 150. Dedicated to celebrating the art, craft, history, tradition, and romance of wooden vessels around the world. Speaking of vessels around the world, we went and saw Gravity last night, the movie. (laughs) I don't think those space stations are made out of wood, though. I don't know. They're probably some high-tech carbon fiber, alloy, metal, something, something. Anyway, great to have you uh, with me today on the podcast. Well, I guess you're not with me on the podcast, but you are listening, so that's a good start. We've got another action-packed segment today. In fact, today's featured segment is an interview I did. Actually, it's an interview I'm doing tonight with myself. Yes, I'm going to interview myself about the 12-foot lapstrake canoe that I finished building this year called Chelan. And I thought it would be fun to go into some of the gory details about the build, talk about the time it took to build it and the cost and some things that I learned, and give you some tips about the boat and kind of my opinion of it once I'm all done. So stick around for that. I think it's going to be fun. So your mission this week, should you decide to accept it, is to convince the whole world that wooden boats are the only way to go, that fiberglass and steel and all that stuff should just be taken to the scrapyard because wood is where it's at. Seriously, folks. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Why don't people get it? I don't know. I just think wood is such an awesome medium for boats. But anyway, We'll fight that battle another day. But I'm just doing my little piece, doing this podcast, trying to generate some interest, get some people in the wooden boat game, help them realize that owning a wooden boat can be a lot of fun and not doesn't have to be a lot of work and it's not going to rot in three days and you're not going to have to varnish it every week and all that stuff. So there's a few myths out there that we have to overcome as a group collectively in order to get more people in the game. So work on that, okay? That's your assignment this week. Four days from now, I'm giving a little talk at the Northwest Maritime Center, as I've mentioned before. November 20th at noon, I'll be giving a presentation on building your first boat, a primer. Based on my ebook. I'm really excited about it. I've been practicing. I've built all my props. I've got my list of things to take to the class. Uh, I'm going to have some fun with it, so hopefully you can show up and say hi. That would be really cool. And they do like for you to reserve a spot ahead of time, too. It is free, but uh, if you could slip me a 20 under the table during halftime, that would be awesome. Okay, we've got some new subscribers to the Hooked on Wooden Boats monthly newsletter today. Michael Carrico. Carol Johnson, Brent Kennedy, and Ed Gasser. Thanks, you guys, for joining the newsletter. Sorry, I've got a little lisp there. Thanks for joining the newsletter subscription list. It's a lot of fun to connect with people that way. I send out a monthly newsletter between the middle and the end of the month, each month, and tell you what's happening at Hooked on Wooden Boats, provide some resources and tips, and try to have some fun with it. So... If you're interested in subscribing, which you should be, go to hookedonwoodenboats.com slash subscribe. Give me your first and last name and your email address and send me $500 and I'll sign you up. No, actually, you don't have to send anything. Just the name and email address. And you can even use a fake name if you want to. And you can unsubscribe anytime. 
So it's, it's a great deal. It's probably the best free deal that's left out there in the world. If you have a website and you'd be interested in being an affiliate for my new ebook called Get in the Wooden Boat Game, a guide for building your first boat, I would love that. That would be really cool. You can go to hookedonwoodenboats.com slash affiliate and get more information there about how that all works. And my book is really cool. It really helps people understand some of the planning that needs to go or doesn't have to go into building a boat. But let's face it, folks, if you don't plan for stuff, you're not going to get good results and you're going to be frustrated along the way. So pick up the book and build yourself a boat. I think you'll like it. I'm holding in my hand here, I wish I could show you, a brass hook. It's forged brass. It's a boat hook that's probably, I would say, 10 inches long. And it's got a couple holes in it where you can put a brass screw. Have to put your wood uh, handle in it or pole. And uh, my friend Chuck Lineweber from Duck Borks Boat Building Supply gave this to me. It is really cool. I thank you so much, Chuck. Uh, what's cool, as you know, or maybe you don't know, my podcast hooked on wooden boats. There's a hook in the logo, a boat hook. And Chuck saw that and he said, hey, I noticed there's a hook in your logo. How about if I send you one of these and you can use it however you'd like. So I'm going to put a pole in this thing and use it to have a little fun. So very, very good, Chuck. Thanks for doing that. I really appreciate it. I'm going to set this thing down here. You can hear it banging in the background there. I do have someone interested in purchasing my scamp. I got a phone call through the ad I placed on Craigslist. And uh, there's a local gentleman here that's going to come look at it probably in about a week and yeah, says he's very interested he's going to bring money and if he likes it he's going to buy it so i am super stoked about that i hope that deal goes through i do have an ad coming out in wooden boat magazine in december and also small craft advisor magazine an ad for the scamp for sale but if i go ahead if it's, if i sell the scamp before that uh, then if i get some interest on those ads maybe i'll build another one or two so there you go, folks. There's always room to build more wooden boats out there in the world. The cool thing about building a wooden scamp and offering it for sale is you can honestly tell people this is the only wooden scamp in the world for sale. If you want a wooden scamp, then I'm the only guy you can get it from. <laughs> oh, that's kind of like cornering the market or having a cartel or something or... Um, what do you call it when a company has an unfair advantage in the marketplace? Uh, they have a, what is that word? Okay, the word I was thinking of is monopoly. They have a monopoly, and that's not legal in some places. But anyway, it is fun, though. Okay, that's enough yakking for now. We're going to roll the tape to the interview with myself. Take it away, Wooden Boat Dan. Okay, it is November 16th, 2013, and I have with me Dan Matson from Hooked on Wooden Boats. Dan, welcome to the podcast. Why, thank you. It's good to be here today. <laughs> okay, enough of the fake voices, okay? I'm not going to fake it like I'm interviewing myself. I'm just going to talk. So uh, this discussion is going to be about the 12-foot sassafras canoe that I built uh, I started the boat in January of 2012, and I launched it in May of this year. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to talk about this boat build. I, I took pretty good notes while I was building it about how long it took to build, how much it cost, and some other things that I learned, and some comments about the boat. So I decided I would share for, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 minutes here and talk about the build process, and maybe you could learn something, and maybe... Who knows, you'll build one of these boats. So I built this boat from a book called The Canoe Ship by Chris Kulziski, K-U-L-C-Z-Y-C-K-I. And Chris is the founder of 
CLC Boats in Annapolis, Maryland. He, he no longer owns a company. He sold it to John Harris, but he did found the company. So he wrote this book, and in the book, there's three canoes you can build. And basically, there are three different links of the same version of canoe. These are lap straight canoes that come in 12 feet, 14 feet, or 16 foot lengths. I didn't say that were right. <laughs> 12 foot, 14 foot, or 16 foot lengths. Their lap straight boats are made out of uh, real high grade marine plywood. And so, anyway, in this book, which cost, I think it's, uh, I don't know, it's around 15 or 20 bucks. And uh, if you go to my website, to the resources page, I've got it there. If you purchase it, I get paid a small commission. It's only 48 cents, so so don't get too excited. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, so I, boat, I built a boat from this book. And in the book, basically, is everything you need to build one of these boats as far as the instructions and the plans and dimensions and all that. So that's pretty cool. So... First question, I guess, would be why I picked this particular boat. Uh, at the time I, uh, I was looking to build another boat, I, I definitely wanted a lightweight boat that I could put on top of my car or truck. So my goal was to build a boat that would be around 30 pounds because I wanted something that I could just move around easy. I don't want to fuss with a trailer. I didn't want to something heavy or something big to store. I just wanted something lightweight and a good cruiser. So this boat came in at actually 32 and a half pounds, so I was pretty close there. I wanted a boat that was inexpensive to build, and as I'll discuss here in a little bit, this did uh, come in at a fairly reasonable price, uh, mainly because I built it from a book and I bought my own supplies and materials and stuff. Um, I wanted a boat where you could sit on the bottom, and but had I didn't really want to kayak this time where I had to get in and out of a cockpit. Uh, I wanted something that was more open, that was easily accessible for a big guy like myself. Um, so, of course, this canoe is basically open end to end except for a couple small hatches. Well, they're not really hatches. They're small decks on each end of the boat that are like 16 inches big. So the boat, boat's basically fully open. It's a one-person boat. You sit on the bottom and you paddle it with a double-ended paddle. I love lap strake boats. I just think they're really strong and sturdy and very good-looking boats. And this is a lap strake boat. And it's actually built using a lap stitch method, which I'll come back to that. And my plan originally was to build the single version, which is the 12-footer. And if I liked it, to come back later and build the 16-foot version, which holds two people. That way my wife and I could both go together. And my goal was to finish the boat. I started in January of 2012. And my original goal was to finish it by the summer of 2012. I had never built a boat in one year before, and I guess I still haven't because I didn't finish till May 2013, due to various factors. Um, part of the part of it is in the winter when it gets cold here, it's pretty hard to get the right kind of heat going to do paint and varnish work and so on. I could sit here and make excuses, but I'm not going to, okay? I just didn't get it done. <laughs> Take it or leave it. So if you'd like to see a video of me launching the boat in May of this year, go to hookedonwoodenboats.com forward slash Chelan, C-H-E-L-A-N. So let's talk about the time to build this boat. As I mentioned um I built this boat from a book. There is a kit available from CLC Boats. I believe it cost around $900, roughly. And that would include all your plywood and your epoxy and things like that. But I wanted to save money, so I decided I would build it from the book instead of from the kit. So I'm just going to go through this list kind of quickly here of the amount of time to build this thing. 
Uh, first thing I had to do was lay out all the panels, which are symmetrical panels. Uh, there's 10 panels on the boat, and they're symmetrical, so each end is the same shape. And those 10 panels, when you cut them from your plywood, they are half panels. So you end up with 20 half panels. So to lay the panels out on the plywood and uh, take a batten out and mark each panel and cut it to shape and get them nice and fair, that took me 12 and a half hours. Um, and then I had to scarf the panels together end to end and I had to cut rabbits in the bottom of the panel so that the I could get the lap strake or lap stitch method going and fill a few voids in the plywood and that took me ten and a half hours. Then to drill holes every six inches, stitch the panels together and adjust the wires to fair the hole was seven and a half hours. Uh, fill the bow and stern or sorry, fill at the bow and stern inside, cut and install two bulkheads and fill at those five and a half hours. Cut, shape, scarf, and install gunnels and sand. That took me nine hours. I had some existing mahogany sticks that a friend had given me, but I had to mill them first and get them down to a decent shape. They came out beautiful, but they did take quite a bit of work. And so that was nine hours. Uh, so then I had to come back and put epoxy in all the lap joints because it's a lap stitch boat. And I had to remove the wires first and then sand the hole. That was about eight hours. And then cutting, installing, and installing the decks on each end of the boat. And I chose to trim the decks with Purple Heart. And that took a lot of extra time. So anyway, just to do that, install decks and trim, it was 11 and a half hours. So now at this point in the building process, I've got a boat that is all put together that I could put in the water and use, right? And so far I've spent 59 and a half hours. Now here's where it gets interesting. The rest of the work, which would include fiberglassing part of the bottom, fiberglassing part of the inside, uh, making sure there were three coats of epoxy on everything. I'm gonna turn the page here, make a little noise. Sanding the hull, and I screwed up somehow in the epoxy on part of the hull, and it, it got soft on me, or it didn't ever harden properly, so I had to go back and redo part of that. And then I had to go back and sand the, the entire hull and ferret with epoxy, then prime the hole a couple times, then paint the hole. Uh, then I had to build the thwart. That took me a couple hours. Sand the gunnels and interior. And seven coats of varnish. So all these things I'm mentioning now are basically to glass the boat, paint and varnish it, do all the sanding necessary, put all the coats on. All of that stuff took me... 82 hours. Wow. I just did the math on that tonight because I'd written these hours down. And I thought maybe it would took half of the building time to finish the boat. But out of 141 hours to build this thing, 82 of that was doing the glassing and finishing. And granted, 24 hours of that was putting on seven coats of varnish and sanding between each coat. So I would say the finished boat came out on a scale of one to ten, I would give it an eight. Some people might give it a little bit higher, but it's not a ten and it's not a seven, so I would say eight, eight and a half, right in there. So it came out really pretty. Uh, you know, the the varnish work that's a difficult part for me and all the sanding, but it, you know, like I say, it came out great. So then as far as the cost, so total hours to build 141, about 60 of that to actually assemble the boat together and then the, another 80 
to finish the boat and fiberglass it to protect it and all that. So let's talk about the cost of the boat. Uh, I took about a gallon and a half of epoxy. I used West Systems, which is not the cheapest brand around, but it's very good quality. So for the epoxy, I had to buy some wood flour for the epoxy and other supplies to apply the epoxy, $218. Three sheets of Akumi plywood and a little bit of Purple Heart for the gunnels, not the gunnels, to trim the decks, $113. Now one point I'll make here is that I used the knockoff Akumi plywood. It's stamped British Standard 1088. But realistically, it's, it's a knockoff. It's an imitation of a 1088. And um, I was told that it's as good as the real 1088. But after using it, I would say at least what I got was not as good because there were a few voids in it. And there were a few places where the wood was stained, looked like water stains. So it wasn't the end of the world. I filled the voids with epoxy and I worked with the stains. But, you know, I only saved, I probably saved, uh, let's see, this stuff was about um, 35 bucks a sheet. And I think for another $30 per sheet, so almost twice the cost, I could have gotten the, the best stuff, which I would do that next time. I use galvanized wire for the uh, to wire it together. I would not use galvanized wire again. I would use copper. Copper costs more, but it's a little softer to work with, easier on your fingers. Galvanized wire worked okay, but it has a tendency to dent the wood on the boat a little easier, and it's harder on your fingers. Fiberglass cloth, $28. Paint varnish thinner pre-coat and putty for the whole, $144. And the seat that I put in the boat, I got for $22 at Costco. I mentioned this before. I bought a stadium seat, and I modified it so it would fit in the boat nicely, Velcroed it to the bottom of the boat, and it came out really great. I've got some compliments on it. It's pretty comfortable. If you go buy something that says canoe or kayak on it at a marine store, you know, it's going to start at 60 bucks and go up from there. Miscellaneous supplies, I had to buy a router bit to cut my rabbit joints. Had to buy some, buy some saw plates from my saber saw, epoxy pumps, tack cloth for the var, uh, varnish work. That all came to $83. So my grand total was about $620 for the whole thing. So I was very pleased. I figured I saved probably... I don't know, three or four, maybe $500 over the cost of the kit. But it probably took me an extra to get all my own material, my time to, I actually drove and picked material up in Tacoma, Washington, and all the mess and night round I did with that. Probably took me 20 or 30 hours to save that amount of money. But that worked out okay, because I needed to save that amount of money. <laughs> Uh, and the, actually, the other thing here is the gunnel material, which is mahogany. I already had on hand. I didn't have to buy that. It wouldn't be real expensive to buy. I would say maybe you'd have to add $30 to the cost of the material to, uh, to get the uh, mahogany added in. So if you take the $613 and you add in the cost of the gunnel material and you upgraded the plywood to the better grade, I would say you'd be looking at $750. So it was a fairly inexpensive project that way for cuz this is a it's a good looking boat, it's well constructed. I used quality materials and it will last a long time. I mean, if I take care of this boat, it'll be I'll hand it down to my kids and hopefully they'll get to use it someday. I mean, they've already used it a little bit. And I did have a, I already had, um, well, I'll talk about that in a minute here. Let's talk about lessons learned when I built the boat. Uh, first thing I've already mentioned, actually, is that I wouldn't use the less expensive British Standard 1088 plywood again. I would go for the best stuff. And a lot of the best stuff is made by Jobert, Jobert 
in Europe. Um, finishing the boat is the hard part, and I kind of knew that. I didn't realize it took that it took me more time to finish the boat than to build it. That's kind of amazing. I mean, I think if I built this boat again, I could build it in less time. It's kind of like a lot of things. You do them for the first time, and there's a learning curve, and you make a few mistakes. So I think next time around, I could do it in a, a lesser amount of time. But I also think the amount of time to build the 16-footer wouldn't be much more than the 12-footer, and you've got a lot more boat when you're done. Granted, it is heavier, and you've got to use 6-millimeter plywood instead of 4 and things like that. But when you get all done, you've got a boat that will hold two people, and I think it weighs around 50 pounds, something like that. So it's still not, not real heavy. Uh, I would use Epiphane's varnish next time. I started with Captain's, and I had some problems, and I'm not blaming Captain's for my problems. But what I'm saying is when I did go to Epiphane's, it seemed to go on a little smoother and creamier. And I, because uh, with, with the captains, I was ending up with these holidays in places where I, I was sure I had gotten the varnish on the wood. And after it dried, I'd have a holiday there, which is really getting on my nerves. So after five coats of captains and sanding with 320 in between, I decided to try Epiphanes because I was getting low. Anyway, Epiphanes cost more, but I tried that and it went on really creamy and smooth and thick and got rid of almost all of those holidays. So I think that was definitely a good thing. Again, if you spend a little more money, sometimes it really pays off. The other thing I learned after the fact, uh, after I'd finished building Chelan, I built this scamp boat, and that's when I found out about rolled sandpaper that you can stick on a sanding block. And this stuff is the slickest sinks. It's sliced bread. Because um, I've always used sheets of sandpaper, and I, I cut them into four pieces, and then I clamp those onto my little hand sander block, you know, stick them into place. I've got the little nails that hold them where they're supposed to go. And that all takes time. But with these rolls, you actually get a roll of sandpaper that's about three inches wide. And you buy a special sanding block. And the sandpaper is sticky on the back. And so you stick it on your sanding block and you, you bend it back once and then you tear it and it tears nice and straight and you're good to go. And so it's really convenient that way. And the paper itself is excellent. It doesn't clog very easy if you use a little metal file brush on it and keep it clean, you can get a uh, get some decent life out of it. It is more expensive. I mean, I haven't done the complete math inch for square inch for square inch. I'm sure it's higher, but uh, once you start using that stuff, you won't go back. Okay, as far as the boat's performance, I've had it out a few times since I built it. Uh, it's a very stable and lightweight boat. I like that. It is still a small boat, though. You can't just, uh, you know, I can't just stand up straight and walk and step into the boat like I would step into an 8 or 10 foot flat bottom dinghy uh, that's wider. You know, you've got to, I have, you have to crouch down and kind of uh, crouch into the boat so you don't capsize, which is to be expected for a little canoe. I mean, let's face it, <laughs> it's not a 36-foot Chris Craft. Um, the paddle was too short. I had a Greenland paddle that I had carved for my skin-on-frame boat, which was 84 inches long. And it was a little bit short because I was hitting the gunnels on the boat as I was paddling, and so I was having to put my arms pretty high in the air to avoid uh, dinging up the gunnels on the boat. Uh, so what I did was I, um, I actually cut a 45 degree angle in the center of my paddle, uh, which is kind of the handle part of it. And I scarfed in uh, about 13 inch or 12 or 13 inch piece of cedar 
same stuff that the original paddle was made, made from, and I scarf that in using marine epoxy. And then I, I shape that to be the shape of the existing handle uh, across both, uh, from one end to the other, so it's just nice and straight and smooth, nice and fair. And But I haven't had a chance to use that paddle yet, <laughs> which is kind of a bummer. So that's how I took care of that. Um, let's see, other things on the performance. The boat paddles at a nice speed. I mean, with my Greenland paddle, which doesn't take a lot of torque on your, or doesn't put a lot of torque on your shoulders, you can go at a decent pace and the boat moves nicely through the water. One thing I may do is add some kind of a foot brace so I can get my feet up a little bit in the air and feel a little bit more, um, just kind of have a little grip with my feet rather than just have them flat in the bottom of the boat. You just get a little more torque for your uh, for your effort that way. And next time I might varnish only the gunnels on the boat, not the whole inside of the boat, because on this particular boat I painted the outside white and I varnished the gunnels, which are there's inels and and outels on this boat. I guess you call them outels. I don't know. Gunwales or gunnels on the inside and the outside of the shear. So I varnished those. I varnished the two decks and I varnished the inside of the boat, the inside of the hull. So next time I might only varnish the gunnels and the decks. It would still look really pretty and paint the inside and probably save 10 or 15 hours of labor, possibly. So that's that's one thing I might do differently. So the bottom line is this is a fun, light boat. It's easy to transport. I can put it on top of my truck or my car. It's such a pretty boat that I'm afraid to go out and bang it up, to be honest. So I'm super careful when I take it out because I know how much work I put into the finish on it. But uh, once I get it scratched up a little bit more, I'll be okay with using it as a, like a regular boat, I think. Would I recommend this boat for others? Definitely. It's, it's a cool boat. It's uh, not expensive to build. It's a real pretty boat. It's lightweight, like I say, easy to transport. And the 16-foot 16, 16 version would really be cool to use for two adults. I think it would work really good for that. So yes, overall this is a great boat. I would highly recommend it if you're looking for a small craft that you can build in around 100 hours, maybe 80 to 150 hours depending upon how you do your finish and all that and how much experience you have. This is a great boat. Again, you can build it from the book called The Canoe Shop, which is on my website on the resource page. You can order a kit from clcboats.com, build it that way. Shoot, you could probably uh, loan the book from your, uh, check the book out from your local library and build it that way too, I don't know. But yes, it's a great boat, I would recommend it. And uh, if you get a chance, check out the video of the launch of Chelan at hookedonwoodenboats.com forward slash Chelan. And if you have any questions about the boat or about the building process or any questions for me about building a boat, please shoot me an email, dan at hookedonawoodenboats.com. Well, Dan, thanks for being on the podcast today. It's great to have you, and we hope to have you back again. Why, well, thank you. It's been a real pleasure to be on the show today. Okay, there you have the interview with myself talking about the Sassafras 12-foot lap strake boat. Hope you enjoyed that. I will have some pictures up on the website and a link to my video, or you can probably, you'll be able to play the video right from the website. So check it out when you get a chance. I'm already thinking about my next boat. If I get my scampi sold, I may be on to a strip planked boat next. I love the look of those boats and how artistic you can be in building them. And the fact that you lay on one piece at a time and all that kind of stuff sounds pretty fun. So who knows, I may build a strip plank boat. If you built one, uh, shoot me an email. Tell me how your experience was. I'd love to hear about it. 
Well, this is a podcast about getting in the wooden boat game. Hopefully by listening today, you've been encouraged to get in the game and uh, build a boat or buy a boat or rent a boat or get a wooden boat magazine or do something with wood. Have some fun with it. It's always fun to me to do something with wood. As I mentioned in the last couple of weeks, I'm building some wooden benches. I actually delivered one this week to a consignment shop. They're going to see if they can sell it. That's pretty fun, and I'm starting my next one. So, because working with your hands is a fun thing. Anyway, if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and YouTube if you look for Wooden Boat Dan. Or you can send me an email, dan at hookedonwoodenboats.com. Or you can leave a voicemail feedback message up to 90 seconds long from the homepage of my website. You'll see a little banner on the right-hand side that you can click on there. That's a pretty cool thing to do. I love to get voice messages from people. If you like the podcast, subscribe to it on iTunes and leave a five-star review. That would be that would be sweet. I would really appreciate that. Anyway, keep the bright side up and the barnacle side down. Have a great week. Wooden Boat Dan, over and out. God bless. <laughs>